the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome everyone to our service for June the 21st and as you can see we're back into St. John's in Mahone Bay. But this is a special day. Today is Father's Day and a very happy Father's Day to all of you out there who are celebrating this day. I have a poem for you dads and it's called Silent Strong Dad by Karen Boyer. He never looks for praises. He's never one to boast. He just goes on quietly working for those he loves the most. His dreams are seldom spoken. His wants are very few. And most of the time his worries will go unspoken too. He's there, a firm foundation through all our storms of life, a sturdy hand to hold on to in times of stress and strife, a true friend we can turn to when times are good or bad, one of our greatest blessings, that man that we call dad. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have revealed yourself as a Heavenly Father to all of your children. Bless, we pray, all earthly fathers. Strengthen them to nurture, protect, and guide the children entrusted to their care. Instill within them the virtues of love and patience. Make them slow to anger and quick to forgive. And through the ministrations of your Holy Spirit, May all fathers be strong and steadfast, examples of faithfulness, responsibility, and loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is O Day of Rest and Gladness, found in your Lutheran Worship Book 521. And after the hymn, we will gather our hearts and minds for the proclamation of God's word. First reading, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 to 16. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I'll raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. 
Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. End of reading. The gospel reading today is from Luke 15, uh, verses 20 to 24. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to the father, said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Here ends the gospel. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Happy Father's Day, a day when we stand on our dad's doorstep and give him thanks. How do we give thanks to a good father? Is it with a card, an invitation to lunch, a cordless drill, a barbecue, a tithe? Is that all we do to thank our dad? Well, I'm not a father, and I'm not a perfect mother, but I recognize a good dad when I see one. A good father, in terms of the parable of the prodigal son, is someone you can count on to come to the door and offer you nourishment when you show up on his doorstep. A good father is someone who, though he has caller ID, still answers the phone when you call and offers you encouragement. A good dad is someone who will play, walk the floor with you when you are sick. A dad is someone who loves you no matter what. A woman once said her husband is a good father. We have three children, she said, two daughters in their 20s and a son who is 17. They call to chat with me, but when they have a problem for some reason, it's, can I talk to dad? Our son is on his way to soccer practice at a different field than usual. He calls our landline. Hi, Mom. I'm lost. I need Dad. Our daughter called Friday. Hi, hon, I said. Mom, this is serious. I need to talk to Dad. This girl just backed into me in the parking lot at school, and her car is scratched down the side. But it wasn't my fault. And our oldest daughter, who is getting married in October, calls, Hi, Mom. I'm fine. I need to talk to Dad. The botanical gardens say they can't set up any folding chairs on the grass. So where are people going to sit? And they say they won't refund my $400 deposit. I need to talk to Dad. The woman continues to say it is Dad they want, when they are in trouble. A good father in Luke's view is one who doesn't just wait inside the manor house for you to come crawling back home, but who throwing dignity to the wind, runs down the path to meet you with tears on his face. A good father in Luke's view is one who comes out where you are lying in the ditch, beaten up by life, picks you up and binds your wounds and loves you into healing. Maybe you've never known a father like that, or maybe you have, only you know. Jesus began his prayer, Father, not because he wanted people to equate God with their human fathers. God knows, and we know, human parents can hurt as well as heal. Jesus prayed our Father, realizing that God's identity and purpose exceeds our ability to understand or to speak them. When he prayed the Lord's Prayer, it was a simple, direct, personal prayer, helping us to identify with God's identity and purpose. 
Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. Why do you think this is the prayer that springs to our minds so often? I think it is because it addresses a God who is honorable, accessible, dependable, and merciful. This is the God to whom Jesus prayed and taught us to pray. I read a story about actor Burt Reynolds talking about his dad in an interview with Barbara Walters years ago. His dad was a sheriff in a small southern town, beloved by everyone, but strict with his son. Bert respected and feared him, but yearned for some sign of tenderness or approval. Bert said our family lived by two simple rules, no crying or hugging. Well, I'm going to tell you, I would hate the no hugging, because I was brought up in a family that there was hugs galore. So that would hurt for me. So he said, no crying or hugging. There is a saying in the South that no man is a man until his father tells him he is. And I hadn't yet gotten that message from my father. I kept hoping someday I'd hear it. In the meantime, his hopes of being a professional football player were destroyed by an energy, and his hopes of being an actor were growing dim. They told him he looked like Marilyn Brando, but that he didn't have any talent, and a few bit parts in his 20s left him at age 32, the best known, unknown actor in Hollywood. Then his marriage to Judy Cran hit the rocks. This would be the first divorce in his family. He remembers staring at the phone, knowing he had to call home and break the news. But afraid that his dad would come to the phone instead of his mother, yet wanting more than anything to hear his father's voice. Standing there, staring at the phone, not able to make himself pick it up. Well, when Jesus people call upon Jesus, who do they meet when he opens the door? Who do they hear on the other end of the line? Are we like Burt Reynolds, afraid to hear Jesus? Are we like Jesus' disciples, panicking in a storm at sea? Help us! We are perishing in high gales. Are we like Jarvis, a leader in the synagogue, who fell at Jesus' feet? My 12-year-old daughter is at the point of death. Or are we like a woman who fell at Jesus' feet and begged for mercy? I have suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years. Or are we like a leper who had suffered physical pain and social isolation for years, fell at Jesus' feet and asked, Lord, if you choose, you can make me whole. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched her, and said, I choose, be made clean. When we call upon Jesus, knocked on his door, they were met by a person who had bread to give and who gave it gladly. How? Because he prayed. Early in the morning, in a quiet place, late in the afternoon, alone in the mountains, in a garden, while the footsteps of his betrayers approached, and closest friends on earth lay sleeping, he prayed. And Jesus gives us this advice about prayer in our lives. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus knew this because his tradition from scripture and synagogue told him that God will pour out blessings on one who asks, seeks, and knocks. He knew from a lifetime of praying to a God 
who is honorable, accessible, dependable, and merciful. And so we go back to Burt Reynolds, that after staring at the telephone on the table, dread calling home to tell the news of his pending divorce, Burt Reynolds says he finally picked up the phone, dialed his parents' number with shaking hands, and thank God he got Mom on the phone. Mom, Judy and I are heading to divorce. No, it's final, Mom. Tell him I'm sorry. Tell him I failed again and that I'm sorry. Then he says, I heard this other voice on the phone. Why don't you come on home, son? Bert's father said. And let me tell you about all the times I failed in my life. The doorbell rings. Without thinking, you go to the door and you open it. Suppose God is standing on your porch. You chew on your lower lip and ask nervously, how can I help you? And God looks at you deeply and says, it's the other way around. Or have you forgotten what you said to me last night? I was listening. I distinctly remember, says God, at approximately 12.01 this morning, as you lay in your bed with anxious thoughts rattling around your mind, you called out to me. I clearly remember what you said. You said, Lord, you are calling me to be a friend at midnight to others. Come to me now. Be my friend at midnight. I need some bread. Why do you look so surprised to see me? Did you think I wouldn't come to the door? Well, here I am as promised. Are you going to let me in? Is this not a dad? One who comes when called? A dad who answers you call for your help? This is our dad's. This is what dad is. May you be blessed, all dads out there. May you be spoiled today and be thanked for all those quiet things that you do. Amen. At this time, our hymn is Boring Cry, Lutheran Worship 732, and following our hymn will be prayers of intercession.
Intercession Prayers for Father's Day Father God, Creator and Sustainer, we thank you for nurturing us like a mother. We praise you that your care and protection surround us like a father. On this Fathering Sunday, we remember all the people who have nurtured us, especially the important men in our lives, those who have seen not just with their eyes, but with their heart. Hear our prayer for fathers around the world. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember fathers whose families are torn apart by jealousy, fighting, and misunderstandings. We remember fathers who are older, but who still bear the responsibility of raising children and grandchildren. And we remember fathers who mean well, but make mistakes. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember fathers who are unable to support their children and are forced into unimaginable decisions, who have to sell a child into marriage or human trafficking in order to feed his other children. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember men who, because of various circumstances, are unable to become fathers. We remember fathers who have adopted children and fathers who have given up their rights as fathers. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember fathers who rejoice in the achievements of their children, who joyfully watch a new generation take hold. We remember fathers who are single parents, who through personal sacrifice and perseverance provide a loving home for their children. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember fathers who helplessly watch their children suffer and die from malnutrition because of famine, drought, flood, or war. We pray for fathers where recent disasters have occurred and those taking their children in hope onto the high seas. We remember fathers whose children are sick or disabled and who will try anything to cure or to help them. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for fathers and their children around the world caught in the terrors of violence and living in fear in Syria, Palestine, Afghanistan. We weep with the fathers of those who inflict violence on others. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, thank you for those who have nurtured us. Open our eyes to the plight of so many fathers and mothers around the world for whom life is difficult. Help us share your love and mercy with them. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the silence of this moment, hear the prayers of our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God and Father of us all, honor our prayers, spoken and unspoken, humbly lifted to you in faith. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and your fathers. 
and families forever and ever. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is This Is My Father's World, Lutheran Worship 824.